I love you. Arr. Greg, I have one last question. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Arr, vast and ahoy there, couch potatoes, and welcome to a special episode. Because joining us today on the couch, as my damned cur whines in the background, joining us on the couch is none other than the descendant of Henry Morgan himself. Hello there, that's Captain Henry Morgan, and uh, I am Ron Vald the Scald, and I am humbled and joyous at joining you on this surprisingly spacious couch. Thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah spans two uh, states. Yeah, spans two states, this couch. Uh, I am the faceless Leon. And uh, the the pirate oh, beside me. Arr, yes, I be, I be the green traveler, Captain of Gorsh. <laughs> Captain of Gorsh. That's my dinghy. I... Am captain of the pie can that I was baked in. This is a podcast <laughs> about movies and TV. Oh man! So, <clears throat> Romvald, uh, our special guest, very, very good friend for brother many years, brother, brother, yes, lover, brother, even brother of the seas, and we're talking about a movie that's all about brotherly love. <laughs> It's <laughs> a great segue I mean, there, Leon. It's in there. It's in there a little bit. Yeah, it's in there so- somewhere. Um, but yeah, t- why don't you tell us, Ronvald, what are we talking? Why today on this special, special show, we are talking about a wonderful trilogy, and we are only calling it a trilogy: The Pirates of the Caribbean, or Caribbean, depending on who you want to upset. Nar yeah. Tortuga. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, uh, I definitely was like, wait a minute. That definitely says Caribbean. The last <laughs> when I was well, watching it this time around, I was like, I have always said Caribbean. Like, <laughs> you even hear like, "Welcome to the Caribbean, mate," and I'm like, "Listen, I mispronounced Ocarina for like 20 years. So I can't exactly like give myself a pass here." <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, how, what did you used to say? A cornea. A cornea. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, eh? The, the uh, cornea of Timmy. Of Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So, yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean. A uh, big part yeah. of our, I guess, middle school through high school. Our teenage I, years. Our teenage Out me years, about how yeah. old I am. Thank you. <laughs> right when, right when we were hitting puberty. Well, Ken was Ken was already shooting, but <laughs> I already had up. a three foot long <laughs> beard when I was born. <laughs> Ron Vald the Scald. Ron stories Vald had a as, beard in the womb. <laughs> telling stories as long as his beard. They were Arr. awfully muffled at first because I also taught myself how to speak in the womb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay. usually, usually on the show we'll talk, we'll do a synopsis of a movie and then talk about that movie and then move next to, to the next one. But I think this time around we'll we'll synopsize all of them and then just have a good fun time talking about it. Probably behind yeah. the spoiler wall. There's a lot of stuff that's hard to talk about without spoiling things. If people have really true. never seen these movies, um, I guess it's possible. I guess it's possible. Yeah, I mean, pirates aren't for everybody. I guess that's true. That's a sad <laughs> truth. But you know that that brings us to the moral dilemma of this <laughs> of the romanticization of this period. Um, oh yeah, like, <laughs> piracy is bad. <laughs> 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 they did a lot of bad things. Yeah, they did a lot of really bad things. Uh, mostly, but, you know, well, murdering and uh, marauding and slaving, you know, terrible yeah. things. But this is fun. This is a lot of fun. I love yeah. pirates. <laughs> it's swashbuckling. It's a it's, swashbuckling yes. sea adventure. Exactly. This is less murder and pillage and more our swish swash buckle buckle. <laughs> but still plenty of murder lots of murder 
And also Lots a of lot murder. of like not murder. Like yeah, a lot of like things that should be people. murder, but they are not yeah. murder. Mm. And it's just like, ha ha, they didn't die. We're a Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Kingdom Hearts. We can't let anyone die. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh man. Like some of the yep. best animation of the period in that in that oh, particular yes. chapter of Kingdom Hearts. Oh, oh yes. Everyone loves the story of how Captain Jack Sparrow is five hundred crabs in a trench coat trying to sneak into an R rated movie. Ah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, all right, so so yeah, bring yeah, us to dive? origins. Yeah, let's dive in. Let's uh, the first film is Curse of the Black Pearl, started in uh, came out in two thousand three. Uh, hold on a second, Zelda, bring me the toy. Bring it here. I see his wench is bothering him. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, ah, I'm oh. sorry. Dead air is gray in a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, it could all be cut. That's the thing. Uh, Zelda, yeah. my yeah. God, baby, come here. Yeah, now now the, uh, you know, if we do keep this in, the audience knows that that we edit. I think they could already figure it out. I mean, like. Yeah. Well, they go from here and like, <laughs> and now we go back to this. <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, yeah, we exactly. are at the eight minute mark, and this has been madness. <laughs> it's been wonderful madness. I think they'll love it. I think that you're a new, a new household name, and you know, like twenty households. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, that's more than what I have, which is uh, one. Yes, same. Hey man, my audience. It means my audience is growing. It went from 12 in regards to people reading my blog to 20 in regards to people hearing me talk. Look at that, Greg. That is a really high percentage markup. A <laughs> decade is. of improvement. It is growing, though. It is growing, and we appreciate our listeners. We got people around the globe listening. Like You, know, we you got, say... it's What's that? You say you appreciate our tubers here, our little yeah, couch potatoes. I do. But every episode, you fry them up and eat them <laughs> and yeah, <but> <laughs> mash so them and st- stick them in a stew. All <laughs> right. You, you can love something in so many ways. Maybe it's That's eating true. it. Maybe it's buying it chocolate. Maybe it's eating its family. I <laughs> Love is love, See, dog. Ron Vald gets it. Ron Vald gets it. Um, I'm right. just here to love and, you know. If you know, it really, I would be satisfied with potatoes at every meal. I really would. Uh, Boil really them, would. mash them, stick them in it. Okay. That's right. I already said that. Let's get in to Curse <laughs> of the Black Pearl, uh, released in 2003. All three of these films are uh, uh, written by Terry Elliott and Terry, or sorry, Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio who have a filmography that really surprised me when I look it up because I didn't uh, didn't realize that all these movies were done by, you know, two people, basically. Aladdin, Mask of Zorro, Godzilla, Small Soldier, Shrek, Treasure Planet, and National Treasure. All oh, written by goodness. Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio. Yeah. All just, like, re- weirdly fun movies. Fun. Yeah. They're fun. Like yeah. a very good sense of fun around them. Yeah, and all that's, enjoyable movies. You're you're right, Ron Paul. We're a crit, we're a crit, uh, um, a critique show, so we should say how it is. That's the thing about these films, though, is uh, one of my curses is you know since I've went to college and studied film and like made you know helped work on films and stuff like that, I critic uh, criticize films when I watch them. Yeah, you know I I notice it. I notice little nitpicks and issues I have with it. I don't just enjoy them. I critique them while I'm viewing them. And this is one of the few films like all together that I just have fun. I don't, yeah. I don't mm-hmm. critique. There's a lot of issues and there's so many nitpicks that can be had, but while watching, I don't care. I just, I just have fun and just enjoy the swashbuckling adventure. I think it speaks to Ted and Terry that they have managed to make, about three films here in a row 
of the same series where you sit there and go, ha, ha, silly pirate movie. And you, do, like, of course, uh, to critique something is to show how much you care about it. Yeah. yeah. Because anything that you truly love, you should be able to examine critically and be like, well, what is it do I like? What don't I like? What could be improved? Mm-hmm. Uh, I have the opposite problem when I view movies, which is my brain is off 90% of the time. <laughs> um, so good way to be being able to watch... Yeah, being able to watch these movies, it like comes to life, but in still a sitting there clapping happily like a two year old, right? Because the swords went clang clang, <laughs> <laughs> and the swords yeah. go clang clang so much and so fucking well throughout all oh, three yeah. of these films. I, yeah, the I fights have so are amazing. much to say about the sword fights in this series. Oh, for They're sure. All I I want to say that I'm probably somewhere like in the middle between you two guys because i have a a technical background as well Mm -hmm. and so i do see these things in film I'm like oh that's so cool i i I think i know how they did that and but for me it kind of heightens the experience a little bit uh but i also definitely get to a point where i'm just in it 100 percent focused into this world and i'm i'm a part of its world i'm its fourth wall uh, which what is what made uh, the Deadpool movies so great, but uh, anyhow, right. <laughs> these movies they they do have that effect on me. Like I can just sit back and watch them and enjoy them, and getting to have that lens of like the, how the effects work and stuff too is is a lot of fun as well. I don't understand what's wrong with Hollywood and with the film industry because you know. There have been three trilogies, and many more, but like three big trilogies that have, you know, just made me have fun. You know, Star Wars, the original one, and Lord of the Rings, plus this one. I just, you know, I just enjoy all three of those when I'm watching. I don't I critique yeah. it. And yet, I know they're big budget and they cost a lot to do, but I feel like all three of those movies have made a shit ton of money. Why aren't these companies just trying to make more like that? Just like well, encourage, encourage creator. You know, they are. They're just doing it in the same franchise. They're just stretching the same material. Yeah, I know. Oh, just God, just yeah. a bit too thin for all three of those. Uh, yeah, franchises. yeah. Because that's that's the thing with pirates. There are only three mil- movies to me. I don't. Yeah. I've I've watched the fourth one. I believe I've watched the fifth one, but I didn't like I either of did. them. Yeah, I I recall you blogged that one, and it was not. <laughs> pretty <laughs> <laughs> i know i definitely hated them and it's just it's just because i i'm tired of what they're doing with jack sparrow like johnny depp created this amazing character i'm getting ahead of myself with the curse summary but we'll get back to that soon but he created this amazing character in in jack sparrow mm. and then they've milked it so fucking dry like yeah, they really and, have. and everybody wants him to keep doing the same performance. Everybody wants, you know, that zany crazy Johnny Depp. They don't want you know the the Whoa. Edward Scissorhands or the uh what was the other movie we really liked that he was in? Uh I mean, he was in Ed Wood. Uh, Ed Wood. Oh, Ed Wood, he's good in that, yeah. No, it's you bring up a really good yeah. point where and uh Leon you brought up Deadpool where now we're actually seeing the Mm. same thing that's happened to Johnny Depp happen to Ryan Reynolds. You tell me what is the difference between his performance in Deadpool versus Detective Pikachu versus, I think it's Hobbs and Shaw. And it's just how much he's allowed to swear. And then it's just the same. (laughs) Ryan Reynolds. That's true. I think that (laughs) Ryan Reynolds is going to find his way out of that though because he was i mean johnny depp was a big star sure but i feel like this brought so much more attention to him Mm -hmm. but i feel like ryan reynolds was kind of already up there like i feel like he okay you know what i'm you're you're probably right i kind of feel like he might be on the same track because all the all the girls in class were all like oh johnny depp and uh, you know i guess i shouldn't just limit it to some of the girls there's guys too you know he's a very yeah, handsome listen, man johnny depp's a very handsome man that's for sure <laughs> just wow <laughs> that's all very fair mm-hmm. it's definitely mm-hmm. han- more handsome than his his uh willy wonka 
I like yeah. Well, go oh gosh, I hate it. Willy Wonka. <laughs> it's it's frightening. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I can't even think about Willy Wonka mm. in like a sexualizing manner. No. It's just Gene Wilder. Like, there's just no part of that that's appealing. But Captain Jack Sparrow looks at you and go, "I'd risk." I'd risk, like, what, 20 venereal diseases for this? No, okay. I'd be okay. I, I might, you know, drink with Jack a little bit, but uh, I think I'm, I'm fine. Like, he, he's definitely attractive. He's definitely attractive. Uh, hey, to each their own. Okay, well, let's stop objectifying Johnny Depp. And... All right. <laughs> okay, All right. Well, you, go ahead, continue. Objectify, continue. No, no, you're oh, right, you're right. You let's get to nicely. the summary of Curse of the Black Pearl. <laughs> Uh, I got really close to the mic. Sorry there, listeners. Anyways, oh, now my dog's mad. My cur. Arr. Uh, nar, she is. She She's be, she be with indeed. your lack of professionalism. Someday we'll have a nice little studio where we can avoid the background sounds. Yeah. But until then, I will synopsize. Young Elizabeth Swan is singing on a, pir- on a ship, a, you know, Captain Norrington's ship. I don't remember the name of the ship, but maybe he was Admiral. Uh, I think, well, I think Admiral? Admiral is above uh, the Dauntless. Uh, it, Commandant, Co- a Commodore. Commodore, yeah, <laughs> Commandant. I think the ship's name is the HMS Dauntless. Uh, yeah, and it's bad luck to have a woman on board, as we found out, uh, find out from Gibbs, who for whatever reason was following the law at this time. <laughs> He'll become more important later. It's fine. She's rich. He looked good, young. I like how they they make him age. Yeah. He's just a uh, he's he becomes uh, Jack Sparrow's like first mate, and he, he's a good friend of his. I don't remember who played him though. I have a dear friend of mine who, even back in the year of two thousand three, we knew he'd grow up to look like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Man, if that's a bad I thing swear. though. Oh God, he he is rocking it so hard. Yeah. And I've never been prouder of a friend to be like, I better look like a pirate someday. And if he just let the mutton chops come in more, oh, perfect. <laughs> People thought I would grow up to look like either Philip Seymour Hoffman or Drew Carey. And then I grew a beard, so fuck them. And all you look like now is an absolute treasure. Ooh. Gibbs is played you. by uh, Kevin McNally, just nice. uh, to give him proper props. Uh, he's Thank you. Ke- perfect. And he's, Kevin McNally uh, does a great job. Good job. And uh, he he tells, you know, the, I'm just going to call him Commodore Norrington. I don't know what his rank was at the time, yeah, but that's what he becomes. Happened, yeah. Yeah. Just give him a new rank every time we bring him up. Yeah, yeah. General Norrington. <laughs> 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 Secretary of the Navy Norrington is steering the ship towards a, a shipwreck. Uh, they believe pirates were involved, and you do see a pirate ship going away. I don't remember if it was the Black Pearl or not, but I think it was just a regular pirate ship. But they find one survivor who is young Will Turner. Uh, and Elizabeth saves him, his life from being captured uh, by stealing his pirate necklace that he was wearing. Because there was no mercy for pirates in these films. Uh, if the government caught you, you were immediately hung or just killed. It didn't matter. As long as you were dead, you were there was good. And they grow up. They become young adults, both smoking hot and secretly in love with each other but because of their rank uh you know will turner was i don't know if he was auctioned off i was gonna say auctioned off to the blacksmith but he could he could have been he's he becomes the blacksmith's apprentice a a, a damn good one by the way he's a great swordsmith and kira knightley is the uh i just immediately call her kira knightley elizabeth swan played by kira knightley is the governor's daughter, so because of the class difference, they can't explore the love that they clearly have for each other. I don't know if I mentioned Orlando Bloom plays Will Turner. One day, when Commodore Norrington is being actually promoted to Commodore, Jack Sparrow just miraculously arrives at... Where do we decide? What is it? Port Royal? It's uh, Port Royal. Port Royal. Yeah. All right. Which, uh, let me insert my trademark fun fact here. Uh, Port Royal is also the home of Captain Henry Morgan after he accidentally sacked it. Went back to the Crown 
to be like, hey, uh, my bad. I sacked it. What are we going to do about this? Ah, whatever. We'll make you the governor of it. <laughs> <laughs> what did he think? It was a Spanish town or something? I have no idea. It's just the wrong part of Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we inf- uh, emphasized that uh, our friend Ron, Ron Valdeskold is actually a descendant of uh, Henry Morgan. That wasn't just a joke at the beginning of the of the episode. It's weirdly mixed pride and shame. Yeah. yeah. Because while, yes, he was a privateer, he was a monster of a man. <laughs> uh, but, you know, oh, yeah. it's interesting to have your lineage tied to a legend, even if, uh, oh, I... even if they were terrible. Uh, so getting back to the curse, Jack Sparrow arrives with uh, his magnificent theme song. I kind of want to sing it. Just I am not even going to attempt. Boo. All music uh, created magnificently. <laughs> Let me find it in my notes. I know I wrote them down. Hans Zimmer and Klaus yeah. Bedell. And I have so many strong opinions about their pieces oh all of them exclusively positive yeah the music is great <laughs> there are some moments where it's just kind of i would say a little bland but it's not bad mm-hmm. it's kind of just bland to fade in the background and give you something i don't think that in a movie everything needs to be jam-packed action music heavy uh so i think the score does exactly what it needs to do when it does it uh, I, I used to listen to it uh to study with back in undergrad right yeah Yeah. this and sherlock holmes like were two soundtracks that i just constantly played definitely i love the uh robert downey jr's yeah yes excellent music and also by Hans zimmer i believe (laughs) discombobulation that's a hell of a good one guys really good at interesting percussion yeah yeah because i just realized that i think it's in sherlock holmes where it's like the sound of industry is the percussion in some of the songs. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, the famous, like, hey, I can relax now. I made one really long note and everybody's really cool with it. <laughs> gotta, gotta love I'm Inception. A yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we, we will talk Inception and it will be magnificent because there's so many fun theories. Inception there. for me, though, I gotta say, like, I loved that. I loved the script. I did. And, yeah. and the, the excuse me, we're talking about the composition, the uh, the score. I loved it. But it ruined every single movie trailer from that point on. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> every single one. I still miss the old, uh, I think, I want to say it's Fred Tatasciore. But I think I'm completely wrong on that. But it's the in a world oh yeah the voice. aliens have come from the moon and you're like heck yeah and now you you don't get no. any of that because they tried i think they tried after he passed like there's a couple of guys that that got to do a couple movies like that but i think it just didn't work because it wasn't him yeah yeah you can be the next one ron vault oh, geez here's trying <laughs> here's the <hope. laughs> Just come up and be like, all right, this time on Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, <laughs> Captain Jack Spur is, um, what? I'm fired? Okay. okay. <laughs> Speaking of which, Jack Sparrow arrives and he, he wits his way aboard a ship, turns two uh, guards, just two silly supporting characters who appear in every fucking movie. And have their own foils on uh, Barbosa's ship, yeah. which is hilarious to me. Good old Pentel and Rigetti. Thank you. Yeah, I can never remember their names. Those are the pirates, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I the... could never remember the Marines. The, the uh, red coats. One, I could is, never remember them. one is Lieutenant Gillette, I believe. Really? I Gillette? He's a lieutenant. He, the, he, Gillette's a competent one. Oh. Oh, okay, I think he's oh, the one. Oh, you're that, right. You're uh, right. He's the he's one like that's like right Norrington's right, under Norrington. right hand. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say. I was like, holy crap, they're fucking lieutenants. Like, <laughs> how did they get right. there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I did find it though. It is. Um, We're so good at this. Yeah. 
where we do <laughs> podcasts. Do 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 do. <laughs> uh, I believe it's Murtog and Mulroy, and I'm not sure if I'm saying huh. those two correctly. But yeah, yeah I like God. it. They're the, they're the they're the red sh- shirts. Yeah, they're goofy they're guys, guys, and and Jack Sparrow immediately talks his way past them. Uh, which it shows a beautiful thing. Uh, like this movie's great at their character work, and that's one of the beauties of Jack Sparrow is he's an excellent reader of other people. So he knows precisely how to get out of like any kind of trap because he walks in there and he's like, oh, I bet these two constantly fight each other, like you know, good friends, <laughs> you know, just like yeah. they bicker with each other. So he's like, I bet I could work that against them. Get past them. Get on the ship. And if Elizabeth Swan hadn't fainted and fallen into the waters, Jack Sparrow might have gotten out of there. But being the guy he is, he jumped in after her and got captured for his efforts. Immediately escaped from that capture, only to run into Will Turner and Will Turner's home territory of his blacksmith area. Yeah. And then you that's where you learn that Will can fight better than most. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Jack Sparrow uses that against him too. He turns it into a training lesson so yeah. that he can get out try to get out the door. From there, eventually we get introduced to the crew of the Black Pearl and they come or they be cursed uh, and they abduct uh, Elizabeth for reasons of the plot and uh then it the story is now Will taking Jack to go get her back like they they both want to be at the Black Pearl for different reasons. Oh my yeah. god, I actually remember why they took Elizabeth. Uh, they were there for a Turner. Yeah. And when Elizabeth was caught, she's like, oh crap, I'm the governor's daughter. I'm super important. If I right. tell them my last name is Swan, they'll kidnap me for sure instead of like just leaving me here or killing me. Right. So she's like, oh, I'm Elizabeth Turner. And they're like, oh! And it's just like this terrible cosmic churn where it's like we need a turner she secretly wanted it just to be her last name yeah that's Aww. it it was subconscious oh it was sub- it was freudian <laughs> yeah so we do meet the <laughs> black pearl and we learn that they are cursed they are cursed and that's the curse well my that's God, the curse the title of the movie i know <laughs> <laughs> they said it it's fucking crazy it's fucking crazy you guys yeah, and I mean, it also, I mean, again, the title also has many different uh, meanings. Like, uh, you know, at World's End has so many meanings, and I don't really know if Dead Man's Chest really has any other meanings than just Dead Man's Chest. Unfortunately, but, that one's really literal. That one's yeah, literal, yeah, but I feel like it's not necessarily connected to what it's connected to in the movie. I, I feel like yeah, kind of like at World's End. Yeah, because it's like At World's End could mean like literally going to At World's End or it could be the pirate, the w- end of the pirate's world. Yeah. And, but like Curse of the Black Pearl, mm-hmm. one is there's the literal curse of, you know, all the, the, the shipmates can't die. They're, I mean, they can die if you blow their bones apart and everything, but they're still going to be alive some some way i guess they'll just be feeling the the explosion i guess they'll they'll just really wish that somebody would gather them up and put them back together yeah and when they step into the moonlight they just become bones and sinew and you know elizabeth learns that the hard way through a, a horrific nightmare and one of the greatest lines in any kind of action film delivered by the irreplaceable jeffrey rush who is hector barbosa the captain of the Black you, uh, Pearl. You best be- start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. And then proceeds to have a terrible <laughs> CGI wine pour down his skelly body. That is like... That's like the one big negative of Black Pearl. Is It's not bad... It's not like super bad CGI. It's it, it's it's dated, definitely. But for, it's but for 2003 CGI. <laughs> yeah, it's... yeah. I would say yeah. it was pretty good for 03. I would say it was pretty good for then. There definitely had been it, Like in the next two movies, oh, just yes. three years from now. In the next two movies, yeah. But I mean, you know, tech like expands so fast and people, you know, mm-hmm. the, as it expands, there's people who figure out how to use they it. They also got like a super great budget for the next movie, I think. <laughs> 
probably better than yeah. this one i would imagine because this one did really well everybody was like fuck yeah pirates. yeah but that's <laughs> i think that's really the synopsis for black pearl is jack and will start going on a cat and mouse chase to save elizabeth and this film doesn't specific like there's no literal setup for the next two films there's just a lot of world building and you know background setup that that impl- right. that that impacts the next two films but it's mostly standalone you know you you can watch this and feel satisfied yeah. with the ending satisfied that you know Jack's gonna go his way Will and Elizabeth are gonna go their ways and everybody's gonna be happy ever after you can believe it yeah. or you can watch the next two movies which I highly recommend but you know audiences at the time didn't know this going ahead if you haven't watched these movies dead man's chest and at world's end are like one nearly five hour long movie very highly connected uh this like i like the ending in dead man's chest but it is not the wrap it definitely doesn't wrap up in a pretty bow yeah. like uh Black yeah if Pope you watch has. dead man's you gotta watch at world's uh, end you just have to it's uh, like definitely. it's like with star definitely. wars you know you can watch a new hope and feel somewhat satisfied but then if you watch uh empire strikes back you have to watch return of the jedi that's for sure so speaking of then ron vald regale me a tale whenever you're ready ron vald oh do i like welcome everyone back or Oh no, we're not gonna take like a commercial break or anything. Okay, uh, we're gonna act like I said, regale me a tale, and then, and then yeah, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't paused. Yeah, what are you talking about? This is one continuation, Ron yeah. Bald. We record movie. three hours straight every single time. Everybody, shut relax. the fuck up! I'm trying to start. <laughs> <laughs> you can do this ron vault you're handsome everybody likes you and they want to hear your voice all right you're the scald we love you shut up (laughs) so dead man's chest uh and that is the show thank you everybody (laughs) (laughs) so dead man's chest is um i'm gonna tilt my hand here and say my favorite of the pirates trilogy oh (gasps) shit uh here we actually start like we even see the writers tilting their like hand towards the audience to say like hey we have a bunch of other stuff planned here and the pirate mythos is deeper than you think because we we dipped our toes into the supernatural in pirates uh curse of the black pearl Mm-hmm. Where it's like, oh, so there are skelly pirates. That's kind of cool. Yeah, and Where a skelly a, monkey. And a skelly monkey. Jack, Don't truly the star. Which, that is bullshit, by the way. Like, just because he's adopted by Barbosa, he gets to be part of the curse. Like, that poor guy. You know, well, I think he took a, a coin. He did. He took some of that ah, treasure. Ah, that's fair. Okay. That Jack knew what he was doing. Wow. Well, um, also, can we talk about Hector Barbosa naming his monkey Jack just as a middle finger to the real Jack? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's those little moments where Hector Barbosa is a great villain and a great character, <laughs> right? No, we made we named the monkey Jack. You know, in your favor. <laughs> the gist of this movie, we have, um, we've already seen some of our characters and we've set the stage, so we don't have to reintroduce ourselves. Yeah, uh, we have Jack Sparrow, Captain Jack Sparrow. A uh, bit of his backstory be hinted at with the arrival of two figures of myth. You have Davy Jones, played by the great Bill Nye, where Davy Jones is actually a reference to Davy Jones' locker, uh, a figure of speech in the nautical world, where it's not an actual place you can shove a nerdy pirate inside. It's <gasps> actually a reference to the bottom of the sea. So to send uh, someone to Davy Jones' locker is to sink their vessel, preventing them from, one, living. Uh, yes, green. Uh, SpongeBob taught me differently. I believe yeah. it's an actual physical locker with dirty socks in it. Yeah. 
Davy Jones we don't mention to... that square bastard in my presence. <laughs> 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 Speaking of Spongebob, we also have the Flying Dutchman, who apparently, in Spongebob, didn't sound at all Dutch. I am calling them out on this. <laughs> oh, snap. But the Flying the flying Dutchman in folklore was actually a ship lost adrift at sea. Uh, it was said to be a ship that could never make port, so no, none of them could ever truly live invariably that would mean that it had to be a ghost crew i also think it's kind of an explanation for just abandoned ships like something happened maybe the crew did die but these ships didn't immediately sink without their crew so you could just be sailing along at night and just see a ship that's the no crew no sails open just adrift at sea new ship yeah, well, new ship, but here's the problem. Pirates are superstitious as hell. So as soon as they see that, they're like, nope, fuck this place. <laughs> they have to get the hell out. <laughs> but, so, Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio combine these two figures and make Davy Jones the captain of the Flying Dutchman, which is also one of the coolest looking ships yeah. I've ever yeah. seen. It's like this weird skeletal pirate ship crewed by people who have never been able to touch land and they uh the character designers went f- all in on these characters yeah, it's fucking to the dope. point where they are part of the sea where and part of the ship from, and part ways. of the ship so you have pieces of actual ship equipment and pieces of aquatic creatures which range from davy jones having this weird chimera mix where one hand is actually the claw of a crab and his face is uh, has octopus features. So in one character you have the feared decapod cephalopod combo <laughs> by Bill Nye, so it has an air of ridiculosity to it. Imagine like Cthulhu with a pirate like a pirate accent going like hello there buck <laughs> like okay i'm on this ride let's do this immediately charming let's do this but it also ranges to the stupid which is why pirates of the caribbean cannot be taken seriously which is why you're able to turn your brain off you have a guy yeah whose body appears to be an entirely different crew member and this pirate is a conch shell where his head is also a crab <laughs> Cause you and that say, don't make sense it makes no sense and he's the dumbest character he just, and yet I'm still on board but he just gets knocked off and he swivels around and it's just like are you just a crab that has like some dead person's body like that's what all is he <laughs> I think his head just turned into a conch it's just, it just slowly became a conch it just slowly became that's a so conch weird. and then it could become separate of the body but and the body crew, just doesn't listen to him. <laughs> body's crew, like, fuck him, I'm out. This crew comes to uh, harass Captain Jack Sparrow because of a debt he owes Davy Jones. And the movie does not go into this, but it hints repeatedly at uh, Jack Sparrow's crime. His great crime that branded him a pirate. And of course we see this come from two antagonistic fi- uh, figures... One, Captain Davy Jones, demanding a hundred souls, or Jack's soul. For And I don't think the movie actually uh, brings this up fully, but Davy Jones brings back Jack's ship. And Jack lost yeah. the ship because of his former employer, Cutler Beckett, one of the heads of the East India Trading Company. And Cutler Beckett ordered Jack, who was a privateer at the time, aboard the Wicked Wench, which was Jack's ship, ordered him to deliver some cargo from one of the African capes. And uh, bringing up those two words immediately tells you what kind of cargo he had. And Jack, I believe in a deleted scene, people aren't cargo, mate. So Mm. we have 
Jack Sparrow, a privateer under the employ of the East India Trading Company, releasing slaves because Jack Sparrow, let's not beat around the book, is a bastard. He's a yeah. bastard. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow is a villain. He is a pirate. He's selfish, all these yeah. things. But when push comes to shove, Jack is a good man. So he releases these slaves, a hundred souls. And he is sunk for it. His ship is burned. He is stranded. But he makes a deal with Davy Jones. And Davy Jones raises his ship from the sea. Its hull blackened, its sails scorched. And it is rechristened the Black Pearl. So the Black Pearl is the Wicked Wedge? Yes, and that is one of the coolest backstories that they did not talk about. See how much better he is at this, people? Where's What's the source of this? Is this all so, in deleted scenes and shit? Uh, uh, DVD part content? of it is in deleted scenes, but there are also books that have come out explaining oh. Jack's backstory. And, of course, uh, in high school, I had an embarrassingly burning passion for these movies. To the point where I will say this to you and all the couch potatoes out there. I haven't watched one of these movies in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I still remember all of this. It yes. stayed. It is etched so, into my soul. <laughs> this this couch potatoes is why we invited Ron Vald the Skull to sit with us and do this. Not not because of of his uh, his pirate fetish, but because of uh he's better at it than us he's better he, <laughs> he, he you're not gonna get a story told with the great detail that he can bring to it he is truly uh he is the skull man yeah yar you're making me blush <laughs> <laughs> yar is the skull there ron vold oh you stop it no so uh tangent aside sorry uh, no, you get this movie comes to a few a few heads here, a few different paths are in this movie, because I think it goes to three men, are at the core of this movie. You have Jack Sparrow trying to backpedal, where I think personally I think Captain Jack Sparrow comes truly to life when he is backpedaling. Yeah, uh, and this entire movie is Jack sprinting backwards. <laughs> Is it the mm. first movie or this movie where somebody, one of the uh, naval men, is like, "Do you think he plans it all out?" Because <laughs> I, I think it's uh, Gillette in the first movie where Norrington, Postmaster General Norrington, looks at Jack and goes, <laughs> "You're the worst pirate I've ever heard of," and he's like, "But you have heard of me." And Gillette sits there and chuckles because in this moment, Norrington is dismissing Jack because he knows why Jack is a pirate. And it's because he freed slaves. And he was deemed a pirate by the East India Trading Company for this transgression. So in essence, he is a shit pirate because he didn't <laughs> partake in the slave trade. <laughs> so on the topic of Vice Admiral Norrington, we have his story where he is disgraced He's no longer known as Master Chief Norrington. <laughs> Not even Colonel <laughs> Kentucky, uh, Kentucky Colonel. <laughs> Not even Kentucky, Kentucky Colonel. Kentucky Fried Colonel Norrington uh, lives in disgrace, and he's trying to find a way to get into the good graces of the powers that be. Meanwhile, yeah. you have William Turner, because we have to have a romance angle in these damn movies for some reason. It's fun. I know it's fun. I just wanted more Jack when I was in high school. <laughs> but, so you have uh, Will Turner, and the writers actually bring in another character that they mentioned briefly in the first movie, which is Bootstrap Bill Turner. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Turner. And we'll One of my least YP. favorite characters. Right, but we'll bring in Bootstrap <laughs> beyond the wall of spoilers for why they needed him. Right. Yeah. But, that's a good idea. Uh, Will is trying to find his father. And he finds him uh, in this movie aboard the Dutchman, serving as part of the crew. And so his goal is to try and free his father. 
Jack is trying to free himself, Norrington is trying to regain his honor. Mm-hmm. And this leads to this amazing like struggle over the the eponymous the item. The MacGuffin, the eponymous, the title. Uh, yes. The Dead Man's Chest. Because uh, bum, bum, in this, bum, the Dead Man's bum, Chest bum, is bum, exactly... Bum, 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 bum. It's a chest. A real chest. chest. And it belongs to a dead man. Because there's <gasps> literally a heart inside it. <laughs> oh, shit. It's got two and meanings. So, it does have two meanings. <laughs> yeah. And it's... Yeah, it's his chest and there's a chest. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, I should leave this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing great. You're doing great. Why am I here? <laughs> uh, what, do you, what do you think? You think uh, that is that pretty much the summary of uh, the synopsis of this movie? I I'd give it that, but I'd also would like to talk about one of the coolest details. Yeah, which is tied intrinsically to why I love this movie above the others. Uh, one, Davy Jones is one of the greatest film villains oh, yeah. i've ever seen he, if anything in my earliest memories he's one of the first sympathetic villains i truly c- clicked with yeah hmm. because you have there's obviously a deep sorrow to davy jones in this movie and it comes out as rage and passionate sorrow through yeah. his music Yes. And that music, Davy Jones theme, is one of the greatest, most beautiful pieces I've ever heard. And it is only made more magnificent with the other force against the world, against the pirates, against order and everything, is the Kraken. Which mm. has one of the great. Oh, God. I know I keep saying the music's great, but just even listen to Klaus Belda and Hans Zimmer, the Kraken. And it's like Jaws mixed with pirates mixed with like the orchestra of heaven. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a struggle against the supernatural forces that just embody the sea. So everything Jack loves, he has to try and avoid in this movie. And it also has one of the greatest fights I've ever seen. It's stupid. It's a very stupid fight. It's on a windmill. Or, no, a water wheel. <laughs> a water wheel, yeah. yeah. It is a water wheel, and Cirque du Soleil, if they would do this in a show, I would <laughs> I would give them all of my money. I've seen the wheel trick in Cirque du Soleil. I need pirates on it. <laughs> See, and I, I absolutely love that scene wholeheartedly. Oh, but it's yes. also it's also one of the moments where it pushes itself to the to the border of where I'm where I'm just like all right I'm starting to critique you know because right. there's, there's there's so many moments where I'm just like uh, uh, for example they're trying to get a key that's stuck on the bottom of it and Jack running along the bottom hits a hits a pull that pull then disappears and he never yes. has to worry about it again <laughs> while trying to run after that key. Huh. He doesn't and, duck. He never ducks. He never, you know, he doesn't have to like don't worry about it. He just he runs the entire that. world of it. And right I at the believe, beginning where he would have gotten hit, he just grabs the key. You know what? I believe the term huh. is rule of cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because nothing in that fight should happen as effortlessly <laughs> as it does. <laughs> yeah. Cause, Cause they're, they're just like hanging on like effortlessly when it's like rolling up and over and oh, like yeah. they, they don't even worry about gravity. It's so fun. I believe in the words of cinema sins, they survive this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. That's but fine. again, but again, I, I don't, it doesn't go beyond. It just it works it up to the border where right. I'm like, uh oh, I'm starting to become the critic again. But then I just relax because it's fucking hilarious. Like so, I don't care. That brings up another moment that is very similar, very similar to this, where they're in cages made out of human bones, and it's basically <laughs> hamster balls that they're in. Yeah, and oh, they're all they're geez. doing the same thing. They're they're running away. Well, this th- in this they're running away from uh, a. a a bunch of uh, tribal people and uh 
that is just another moment where you're like, okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> but you love it at the same time. It's like it's like Billy Benny Hill antics. Like <laughs> you expect them to have that music. <laughs> we have come to a point where I have to bring up another reason I genuinely love Jack. Yeah. We brought up how brilliant he is with people. And I remember us talking um, off mic about yeah. how it seems he's right. like five steps ahead of everything. Like this guy's always on his feet, uh, always thinking. And I, 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 I'd like to argue that. I don't think he's five steps ahead of everything. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like at most two. <laughs> Because in all, all these movies seem to have yeah. like love right. to put Jack gets away as a scene, and in both of them, <laughs> all I see is yeah. sheer blind panic. Yes, but with calculations behind it, where it's uh, either him swinging from a ship arm on the docks of Port Royal. Him screaming his lungs out, but still kind of looking around to see, like, oh, hell, where do I Always go? running with his hands in front of him, like, <laughs> like going crazy. It's, <laughs> it's like he's grasping at options. That's why yes, his hands yeah. are out. He's just like, oh, God, he's, something's got to save me. Oh, I love that. <laughs> he's a pirate through and through. And the, the biggest thing about piracy to be successful is to be able to find any opportunity he's an opportunist it's survival and grasping at any chance of making something better for you. i would say he's he's two (laughs) steps ahead with a perfect pivot toe you know what i'll give him that that man's got a perfect pivot yeah he knows when he (laughs) that pelvis pivots perfectly right when he gets when he gets frightened he can immediately just turn around and be like all right what's plan b i gotta find a plan b (laughs) with pinpoint poise that pelvis pivots perfectly all right, I'm done. My bit's over. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciated it. You've That's penned great. us a poem, you poet. <laughs> I'm a poet. I didn't. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, but I would say that's uh, the most non-spoilery summary of Dead Man's Chest I can give. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. Where uh, I'm gonna... once we go beyond the wall, I will just start gushing about why I love that movie. Yeah, so much. we're gonna we're gonna hire you to just I... summarize all of our films from now on. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll just and we'll come in at the end and be like, yeah, I did like it. <laughs> So are we moving on? I think we are. I think I'm going to talk about At World's End. Just just a little bit, because this movie in particular is hard to talk about without spoilers. Because you pretty much have all the same characters as mm-hmm. you did before. But, you know, they're wrapping up the end of this. But basically, At World's End, I, I, I never really liked the title, but I get why they named it At World's End. Because that is how they get to rescue jack from a precarious situation let's say that jack somehow is in prison again in a different form (laughs) (laughs) right and then uh i don't know if we mentioned beckett or not yes yes you did Mm -hmm. you mentioned him in the backstory so he does become a prevalent character and at deadsman's chest that's not the title (laughs) um and (laughs) he he's pretty much in control of everything uh, at the top of this movie. Davy Jones, who we, you could argue was kind of the, the top predator of the sea, uh, is at his beck and call for reasons. More like his second beck at him. I was two seconds behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyhow, yeah, the end, the end of the, the rest of the movie is them trying to gather the brethren court Arr. the the pirates the pirate lords to meet and decide what to do in order to get control uh, or at least the ability to be free on the sea so we talked a lot about how these movies a big theme in them is order versus freedom or uh, law versus freedom piracy versus industry mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is e- extremely <laughs> prevalent in this particular Heck, film. I'd even go so far as to say it's superstition versus the scientific almost. Yeah, that that, that can fall on that same line. I, I yeah. Because I think like Beckett's big goal 
is to erase everything like piracy stands for. And that could even extend to like the mysticism of the sea. Yeah. Right. Where... I, I could see, yeah, that he, I mean, I think really, I don't know that he necessarily, he probably does hate pirates, but I think it's, it's more than that. I think he thinks that the, can, the sea is something for him to tame. Well, it's, even... and to tame it is for him to destroy anything that is beyond normal yeah. man's reason. Right. It's like anything that's beyond his variables. Because yeah. uh, one of his big lines is, it's good it's business. It's good business. And I think that's like the entirety of it. Whereas, of course, Jack would like treasure. He'd like to live. Uh, I mean, one of his big things is avoiding death. But I think Jack's, one of his biggest priorities is freedom. And the oh, ability yeah. to do whatever he wants. Uh, to sail the unknown and to have something be unknown whereas Cutler Beckett wants everything to be in control uh, into statistics and into something that he can measure and mm. pirates completely throw off his calculus Beckett is played by Tom Holler Hollander excuse me Tom Hollander and uh, you know I can't say that Beckett is my favorite character, but he's definitely played very well. Yeah, he oh, is. he's played great. I yeah. immediately hated him. Yeah. And I think that yeah. speaks to his performance very well. <laughs> and he's a different, <laughs> he's also a different type of villain too. Cause it's like, you know, curse, yeah. curse had Barbosa, who was just another swashbuckling pirate who had a weird phrase for everything. You know, whenever he opened his mouth, there's another crazy pirate seafaring phrase coming out. Well, right. You got to remind the the audience every two seconds that he's a pirate. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you had Davy Jones, who, you know, as we talked about, is he's a great pirate as well. He's a, a legend of a pirate in a way. So he's like he's completely different than Barbosa, but at the same time, pretty similar, just more more intimidating you know there, there's more at stake with him and then you have cutler beckett who as blake said is the industry he is business yeah he's well, hell, completely different um, style of villain it's like crimes of emotion versus logic mm -hmm. you have davy jones who's driven by his heart and the pain he has felt mm -hmm. you have hector barbosa who's driven by his selfish greed or just like his whims and then cutler beckett's yeah. just like no it's numbers everything yeah, can definitely. be bought sold and controlled and i think yeah. it's why i hate him so much so like beckett's not a very deep villain by mm -hmm. any means yeah. but he's not no. supposed to be he is a force of change yeah that the right. pirates either have to allow to happen or fight against yeah which kind of makes him the odd man out and thusly how the pirates are able to band together to knock that force out. Yeah. Sometimes we bring up the uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, alignment chart. And he says I, we. I would say... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably mostly me. Uh, anyways, Beckett, I would say, is definitely lawful evil. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, that's totally lawful evil, at least from the view of the pirates. Barbosa. Uh, I would like to say that he is maybe neutral evil, because he, he honestly, I, I, I he, more towards the end he, that kind of lessens. The fourth movie, but the fourth movie makes him part of the British, the army. I yeah. I think yeah, Barbosa. Maybe, yeah. I'd even give him just chaotic neutral. Chaotic neutral, yeah, maybe towards the end of the last two movies, but in the first movie, yeah. when he's all he really cares about is getting his crew back to where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, they do some pretty chaotic things, but uh, he, he, it's very selfish. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, what they're doing, like you know, they're they're willing to completely spill all these people's blood that has touched this gold um which i guess is mostly their blood isn't it yeah that's but, the weird thing is it's hey. all their own blood <laughs> yeah 
but they kill yeah. a bunch of people and spill their blood to find one person's blood. <laughs> which, which yeah. reminds me, now that I think about it, again, I'm sorry to bring up the monkey, but if it still has a coin, then they wouldn't the curse still be there? Because he oh, can't gosh, die. In that's the... actually well, covered. The, the curse, the curse ended. They did it, and then they, he stole another the one. Curse. And then he okay. come and got another. That's yeah. the thing. So he's the only person with. That's the a post credit scene, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And they, yeah. I think they still cover it in the other movies that that monkey can't die. Yeah, I don't think Jack the monkey cares though. <laughs> that stupid monkey. Anybody else ship the monkey with the the parrot? Oh yeah, Cot- Cotton's yeah. parrot. Yeah, him and Polly. Ah, uh, good old Polly. They were a good uh, good friendship uh, we duo. We want to see those children. <laughs> so we want to talk. <laughs> we want to talk behind a wall and you know get all spoilery and stuff well heck yeah i do yeah we do ahoy there couch potatoes go to our one minute 26 10 seconds in about and that's where the wall be coming down Arr. i think one of the biggest things i could talk about is the brethren core itself yeah but i think the biggest stuff i want to talk about uh, now that we're beyond the spoiler wall, is the Kraken. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. the Kraken itself is one of the coolest monsters in movies for me. Not only because we never see the damn thing, we never see the entirety of the Kraken. We see fractions of it. We see it in the dark depths. Or, my biggest issue, we see it beached. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what bothers me. One of the coolest moments and character-defining moments for Captain Jack Sparrow is at the end of Dead Man's Chest, where Elizabeth Swan sacrifices Jack, tricks him into being uh, left alone with the Kraken. Mm -hmm. And so you have this moment where Jack realizes he cannot escape. And instead of backpedaling, as we have seen him do countless times... He faces the Kraken, and its maw opens wide, and you see this unrelenting power, and he goes, hello, beastie. And And it smells so bad. It smells awful. But he found a hat. And he gets his hat back. (laughs) And so the Kraken takes him down to Davy Jones' locker, which we see as it's either like this for everybody or it's just a prison for Jack because he's the resident there. Yeah. But right. that's a whole other thing we can jam on about because it's a great setup and everything. Yeah. But we find out that the Kraken is dead because at the end of Dead Man's Chest, oh, jeez, I can't even remember his name. Hold on. Give me a minute. Give me it. Staff Sergeant Norrington. Ah, indeed. Uh, <laughs> uh, wins. He wins Dead Man's Chest because he brings the heart to Cutler Beckett. Mm-hmm. Meaning that Beckett is now in charge of Davy Jones and by extension, the Kraken. Yeah. Which I don't think we actually really explain, explain that it's Davy Jones's heart. Right. Yeah. I think we were saving that for back here. And I think that's that's even another top topic. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like, sure. why is there a heart there? Uh, how is Davy moving? Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck that one. We're not going to go there. Right. But <laughs> we see this amazing symbol of the sea just tossed aside. Yeah. Like Ted, Eddie, yeah. Ted Ellie and Terry Rossio were either like, oh, crap, I don't want to <laughs> work on the Kraken too. Or think, it was a demonstration of the sheer power yeah. that Cutler Beckett was supposed to possess. But I think it's in more of my that. Opinion, that's it's bullshit to me. I wanted to see the Kraken fight some shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I agree yeah. because it's it's scenes in the in Dead Man's Chest are epic. You know, watching it take down ships is super awesome because it because yeah. it has a different method. It's like instead of cannons and shit, this thing has a process. Yeah. To, yeah. To take down ships. It could just suck the bottom of a ship like into itself like the first time so that we don't have to have any oh, yeah. spoilers of the tentacles and what it really is. Yeah, or it just raises all of its tentacles up and just bashes the fucking ship to pieces. <laughs> I literally uh, just watched an episode of The Magicians today. I don't know if either of you have 
giving that show a chance. They just introduced the Kraken <laughs> show. Oh, no, so, oh, so really? Awesome. You know, it's yeah. weird because, like, I like the Kraken so much because in this movie, whether it was the intention or not, it brought to life a piece of nautical lore because it, on old ship, uh, on old maps, you would see these strange, weird creatures uh, drawn into parts of the sea to tell you, like, hey, that's right. uncharted waters or it's really dangerous. And they're like, hey, why don't we bring a weird creature from Scandinavian mythology, the Kraken, or I think Pintel and Rigetti argue about how it's pronounced. Where it's like, it's actually the Kraken. It's just like, I don't <laughs> care. We're calling it the Kraken from now on. <laughs> <laughs> but to, it, it, it just seems so anticlimactic after watching it, it be such a danger in the second one. Just to have the bureaucrat seem more powerful. Yeah, I mean, though, but like, it, if they decided to even go that route, just show it. Show the scene. Yeah. yeah seriously. Like instead of him being like, I had him kill his little pet. Right. Yeah. Nahi, nahi. I'd like to see more signs of sympathy towards Davy Jones. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It would have definitely helped. I, I mean, like, even if like, there's so many, there's a montage scene of Davy just blowing up ships. Right. Instead of ships, just show him blow up his, his crack and his, yeah. you know, and his pet. His I mean, crack. we've are, we did see, uh, tears roll down Davy's cheek already well i would love to see that more right yeah that was that was only because the heart came onto the ship uh, he doesn't fine. he wasn't feeling emotions and that's how he that's how he knew that the heart was brought onto the ship because then he stormed up to becca and he's like you get that blasted thing off my ship that's right yeah, <laughs> and it's just geez. like oh shit oh, gotta love it but it's i mean i i totally agree with you both i think they should have shown it, but it's more to emphasize the emotional hit that was to Jack because, you know, Jack's was, Jack was in Davy Jones locker. And when he comes out, the world's completely changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, pirates That's are true. being killed left and right. The Kraken that killed him, this huge legend is dead. Just, you know, murdered by its owner. You know, it's, it's a huge moment. And like, I totally agree. I think they still should have shown it, but you know, not showing it was was what made it such a big emotional hit. It's um, I don't know if Captain Jack mentions this, but it's the world keeps getting smaller. Yeah, yeah. and I think no, no. Mm -hmm. He says the the world's not getting smaller. There's just less in it. That's exactly That's it. it. And yeah. seeing the crack of dead is like the biggest indicator of that. There's just mm -hmm. less in it is there's less to discover there's less mystery there's less grand things out there ideas dreams yeah yeah listen to me getting choked up over this freaking trilogy <laughs> <laughs> that i mean that is what you know film should do for you though uh ron wald it should make you think and they they, they even did it in this campy pirates movie I don't know if campy yeah. is the right term for what's going on. It's right. I'd give campy. I think it's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's like, it is fairly gritty. I mean, they are very, very dirty people. <laughs> yeah. Literally, Literally gritty. <laughs> There's some that accuracy. weird hockey mascot. <laughs> but, oh, um, shit. Well, no, let's talk about the accuracy there because that's another beautiful thing about this whole trilogy is how devoted they are to what pirate life was like yeah they're all they're all grimy oh, they yeah. smell like crap some of them have yellow eyes because of jaundice or hepatitis yeah. from like sleeping around <laughs> like, so much listen we want you to look at these pirates like rock stars and these pirates these pirates fuck and these pirates are gross as hell <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, that reminds me. Um, Keith Richards is, is in that movie. Oh, what a mean segue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think to talk that, though, we have to, to back up to... to the Brethren's Court? What's her name? Oh. 
Yeah, but well, her, the binding of uh, Calypso. Yeah, Calypso. It's not oh, God. Calypso. What? Thank you. The with the scene with the Kraken where Jack and Barbosa have that moment. It's like a, it's a beautiful moment because it's Barbosa talking Jack into calling the brother in court. Right. You know, it's because Jack doesn't want to do it. Jack just wants to run away. He doesn't want this battle. He knows it's going to be a, a terrible battle, and you know he's scared of it, kind of. Right. You know, he also has his own plans of trying to become Davy. Because if you That's stab the heart true. of Davy Jones, right. you become Davy Jones. All I guess. All of a sudden, he gets to live forever. Okay, so that brings in the mirages, though, too. Like when he's in Davy Jones's locker, he has so many freaking mirages of himself <laughs> as crewmates. In fact, he slaughters one of them. That's how that's how bored and alone he is. Uh, but, but he doesn't slaughter him. He's still alive. He's on the ground. He's still breathing. <laughs> but I think yeah. in that scene, we see the true essence of Jack, of Jack Sparrow. Because we, we, as far as the audience is aware, if they never watched any trailers or never saw anything, Jack is dead. But yeah. then we hear, like, hey, we're going to go find Jack. We're going to get him back from David Jones Lock. And you're like, oh, God, what kind of torture is he going through? What kind of right. prison is Davy Jones Locker? And the first freaking thing we see is a peanut. No, not even a peanut. <laughs> we see the banister of the Black Pearl and Jack Sparrow's nose. And we follow it for just a little too long than you'd expect. <laughs> and it finds a peanut. <laughs> I think it's just right. It's, it's beautiful. Absolutely perfect. And then we see <gasps> Wait. He kills two of them then. Right. Because he killed the one who found the peanut. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. And then he kills the guy because he tied the shit up wrong, even though Jack probably tied it up 17 different times. <laughs> <laughs> you just, well, you see, like, the true prison. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is, Jack has a ship, like, but that's cold comfort for the fact that there's no goddamn sea. There's no people either. Jack no. likes people. There's no people, there's no wind, there's just a weird amount of rocks. And they all seem to be yep. the same shape for some reason. <laughs> Uh-oh. Thank Uh-oh. you, I lost the Traveler for a moment. I guess I want to wait for him to come back, but I think we should journey back to uh, to Calypso, who is Tia Dalma, is what the character's name is in, in her human form. And she's played by Naomi Harris. I think there was something he wanted to say about her. So I hope she comes back. Uh, he comes back, rather, the Traveler. <laughs> Uh, edit that be- out. Beautiful. <laughs> no, I think that's going to be our new theme song. <laughs> uh, I hope he does come back. Yeah, I miss him. God, is so unprofessional. We have a show to do. <laughs> there Here he is. comes. I lost the internet. Hey, so Traveler, we uh, we actually wrapped up the show. Yeah, it's over. Fuck. While you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> So I was just saying that uh, you had brought up Calypso, and I said in her human form, known as Tia Dalma, played by Naomi Harris. Yes, beautifully played by Naomi Harris. So I have issues with Tia Dalma. Nothing against Tia Dalma, the person, or anything like that. It's uh, it's just people's tend, and we ha- i i know one of you has a theory for me that i really enjoy about tia dalma but uh um, yes tia dalma is an old associate of jack's and she's like this really mysterious seer witch sea yeah. hag type thing uh yeah but, she lived uh man i still don't remember what they're they're called but she it might be mangrove it I might think be, it might mangrove, be mangrove, mangrove but she is uh, uh played as a voodoo practitioner not sure. like voodoo or anything voodoo but she's got this big old secret she is calypso and if you've read the odyssey mm-hmm. like i have you think that's super weird because she's in the mediterranean <laughs> But uh, I think Green has a theory for why Calypso, as a Mediterranean nymph goddess, might be in the Caribbean. Because she is bound in the first Brethren Court 
and she's kind of just stuck in the Caribbean. And so she just kind of being stuck there. She just kind of adapts to the world around her. You know, she takes an interest in voodoo and all of her little witchcraft stuff that she uh, practices. I don't know if witchcraft is the right word, so if it's offensive, I'm sorry. But she, uh, you know, she adopts all these practices just because it kind of interests her. And so, you know, that's why she that's why she kind of resembles, you know, what she is in the movies, Uh, because she just adapted. I I have always just of the mindset like I really appreciate that because it speaks to the displacement pirates are responsible for uh, of people. Uh, But I also would have loved if they had gone into the Loa, which are the deities, I believe, of the Yoruba faith uh from countries like ghana and that region of africa they mm-hmm. have gods of the seas and honestly you could have just called her like Akwe, which is uh a masculine deity but no one's gonna check that in the random schlocky <laughs> disney movie about pirates <laughs> hey, they, they they well here here's another theory i have for you mm-hmm. is and they could have done this with this with one line you know she could have still very well have been calypso but they could have listed off a uh, a line of epithets that were different deities across the world that were sea goddesses. Oh, That's I something see. they could have yeah. done. I did and then that. it wouldn't it would have been so weird because you know like there, a lot of people talk about how a lot of myths uh, share a lot of things in common and like there's there's definitely equivalence when you drop from jump from pantheon to pantheon it's never perfect obviously well, right but it's, yeah. it's like uh, um, i think that could have worked it's like the transition of uh, aphrodite throughout the uh, the mediterranean sea when she started she was freaking i think ishtar or ishtarte uh one yeah, of those from, and they eventually uh, became Samaria. aphrodite uh yeah. but when she arrived in Cathera she was aphrodite but when she finally got to uh uh sparta it was like i can't even remember the epithet for her but it she became like a goddess of love and warfare because any god worshipped in sparta had to have warfare somewhere in their job titles uh, <laughs> but i like that because uh having teodalma or calypso have all these different names or epithets speaks to the fact that as as often as you want to call it the atlantic ocean the pacific ocean the indian ocean it's all the same waters right yeah all the same there no matter where water is it is still connected in some way to the sea regardless she is the sea right and that's like the really cool way to take this but that also brings us to why the heck did she need to be imprisoned? Why does she have a connection to Davy Jones and Captain Jack Sparrow? Because men are fucking petty. And that is, <laughs> you know what? That's there's the lesson. There's the whole lesson of the Pirates trilogy. It's, it's it's true, man. It's so true. Like men are garbo and petty. Davy Jones betrays we smell the love bad. of his life. The mythic Calypso, and all because all because he he's only able to set foot on shore once in ten years, mm-hmm. and the time he gets to, the time he sets foot on shore, she's not there. I, she's off, you know, being a god, <laughs> like, you know and so he feels betrayed. But it also speaks to like, okay, so big spoiler here: we get to see a new Flying Dutchman, the captain of the Flying Dutchman. We get Will Turner, but yes, you have. A man not able to see land or their loved one for 10 years. What is on their stupid hormonal mind when they get to shore? And Tia Dommel's like, I, I, could, I could go anywhere. I saw this weird guy named Captain Jack. He's cute. Yeah, they totally, they totally had sex somewhere along the line. Oh, they have a history. Those seas were boiling. <laughs> <laughs> The number of times that Jack gets slapped in, in these movies is hilarious. The tempestuous uh, seas were calm that day. They fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it, it brings up 
it brings up an interesting like dichotomy between I don't know if that's the right word. It just sounded cool. It brings up an interesting dichotomy between uh, Davy Jones and Jack Sparrow because Jack totally stole his one. Oh, geez, totally. It's interesting because it's like, hey, I gave up my lady love because she broke my heart. And then my lady love goes to this this jackass Jack Sparrow who owes me so much money. <laughs> and now they're getting the brethren court together to free my lady love and she's still pissed at me. <laughs> oh yeah, we didn't even we didn't even talk the first the first court because Davy Jones feels betrayed. He talks a bunch of pirates together to bind Calypso to human form because he felt, again, betrayed by her. Uh, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's so petty. It's like there had to be more to it. But that's yeah. all that this movie really gives. Maybe it was more than once. I mean, he is uh, generations older than anyone else on yeah. the sea. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe there were several times where he came to where they were supposed to meet and she was off gallivanting. I mean, she is Maybe. she is a nymph, which I don't know if that. I mean, I feel like our more modern interpretation of it is there. The, the the nymphs are highly sexualized. I, I I mean, they definitely were back in ancient Greece too. So I'm not gonna say that they weren't. But I feel like in ancient Greece, it was more about the men's pursuit of those beings and them running away. They typically were not. They typically did not want to receive the attentions but i i feel like the more modern interpretation of it is is that they want those attentions and they want to lure me, uh, men and women alike and and gallivant so maybe that is what was happening maybe but i mean the problem with david jones is she did love him she just had the freedom she is the yeah. sea she so is. she just wasn't coming to him but he he teaches a bunch of pirates how to bind them and an interesting fact i guess from a video game is that the first pirate king of the the, of the first brethren court was a lady which is brought back in uh at world's end when they have their fourth brethren court and they name elizabeth swan as their pirate king which i don't believe ronvald was pleased with but i enjoyed it quite a lot i have nothing against elizabeth swan as a character (laughs) but it just like and it was er it did all this stuff but it just seemed kind of weird to me that she wasn't the lord well she was a lord of the sea for like two days right yeah because of uh sao fang I yeah, was, I really liked yeah. his performance too. It was oh. a pretty short performance. He's really in two scenes. Chow Yun like, Fat. I say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, Chow Yun Fat. I guess it's uh, uh, Yun Fat Chow if you're going to say it the the way that his culture says it. The amazing the amazing actor from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragons. Oh, yeah. yes. Amazing. It doesn't sit well with me because it's just like, hey, Cao Feng's dead. You're the pirate lord now. And she's like, I've never sailed a ship by myself (laughs) yeah but she's she's versed in the lore she like she knows what she's doing like they've shown that many times throughout the show that she does know how to how to helm a ship pretty much you know she's she gets a lot of the the surprise moments in the fight scenes where she's just like throw the anchor on the starboard side and they turn around and they're club hauling (laughs) jeffrey rush only only happens because captain Fang is confused and thinks that she's calypso yeah yeah she's brought on under false pretenses but this is the one time she gets to be written well yeah no i agree i like I'll it. grant you that uh i even like the the fact that uh captain Fang thought that he was that he was gonna he was gonna try to yeah. get with her he was literally honestly about to assault or, or rape her and then right. he dies yeah that's but, what happens in the movie and that's not well funny. it was the it was the anger of it was it the was anger just. of calypso yeah he he angered her i wouldn't know if he was going to rape her because he he stole a kiss and that was like how far his he was wanting to go is he wanted to get that kiss oh, okay and then he did that. He did that, and he like backed off because he was like, "Oh my god, the power of that kiss was so crazy." 
you know, he's like, I'm so sorry. You know, I, I shouldn't have done that. I, I overstepped my bounds. And then he gets hit by a cannonball. <laughs> and it's just like, yep, I overstepped my bounds. <laughs> just, Clearly the sea thought that was a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean to, I only really like it as the pirate king because that's when she starts to become a great character because yeah, before that, that she is just a somebody who fawns over Will the entire time you know she's always like struggling with her romance and it's it's one of the weaker parts of the, the trilogy for me is because of how kind of poorly they write her because she's a great character that they can do so much with mm-hmm. that they kind of just push down as much as they can until the end um i do think that she gets a lot more moments that are separate from will in at world's end because of the because of the events of dead man's chest like they they're not really i mean i think they're together but they're it's pretty fragile their their relationship at the beginning of this movie well and it's all it's all based on confusion because will does will thinks she likes jack and in reality, she just can't stand the fact that she killed Jack. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> and then it's a whole matter of, like, you didn't trust me. <laughs> and, and also, like, he he betrayed Jack, too, in, in Dead Man's yeah. Chest. The, oh, my God, yeah. Will Turner. It's so many betrayals in these two movies just from Will Turner. In Will's defense... Jack betrayed him first. <laughs> that is true. This is a true. Lot, a lot and, of times. And he is, he is his pirate mentor, so he learned mm. from the best. What else is there? I know there's more topics. Yeah, I'm sure there's more to talk about, but oh. uh, are we... How, how are we feeling? Are we... Are we got more to talk about? Who wants to talk about what? I can throw out a couple fun facts. Go for it. The Brethren Court is made up of several very key pirates... And they're all lords Mm -hmm. of specific seas. So you have uh, Captain Jack, who is revealed to be the pirate lord of the Caribbean. Where, weirdly enough, I don't know how or how he keeps the title. Frickin' Hector Barbosa is actually the pirate lord of the Caspian Sea. Hmm. It just seems weird he spends all of his time in the Caribbean... Right. Why is he still well, the pirate? That's just where Lord. the most trade is, I guess. I, I where is the Caspian Sea? I don't even. Remember. That is actually like near western, like northwestern Europe, I think. Yeah, I thought so. Just the titles themselves are so very loosely given. It really is just if you carry the mark of eight or a piece of eight, right? Then you are that you are the lord of that area that the piece of eight comes from. Uh, <laughs> like yeah. that's just kind of how it works. That also seems to stem from: Did you kill the previous owner, or was yes, another that's one probably... added? Because then you have Mistress Ching, who is, I believe, the only female pirate captain there, and she is actually based on uh, Elizabeth Swan. Huh? Oh, true, true. The one that's had more than two days on the job. <laughs> uh, so, but Mistress... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, to interrupt, but the Caspian oh, but you're Sea do it is anyways. landlocked <laughs> between Iran, Russia, Kakistan, and a couple of the other stands. So it is it is deep within Europe. So it makes you uh, wonder. Oh, well, Asia, really. It's actually, yeah, it's in Asia. Uh, <laughs> so what, what is he doing way over there? Who knows? Uh, I swear he just killed He, he just killed the guy who had the mark oh, of eight yeah. before. I think that's I, how I feel it, like that's that has probably, to be it. Yeah. But like. Uh, that's, why he's, that's why he's stuck in the Caribbean, though, is he's just like, he got the job done. He's like, well, I guess I'm king well, there. Cool. So. <laughs> I can't really pirate a lot over in a landlocked sea. <laughs> But then you have. I think Mistress... they'd find me, yeah. Right. Mistress Ching is the pirate lord of the Sea of China, I believe. And she is actually based on a real historical figure. Uh, I believe her name is pronounced Xing Shi. Uh, and she was a pirate captain that, at the height of her power, had the largest fleet of pirate ships in history. Uh, oh wow! And it's just amazing, and I could go into this huge tirade about how awesome she was. I mean, she's also a monster. Give us, 
She's a yeah. pirate. She's a pirate. Yeah. Um, but it's just interesting to see that they take snippets of history and embolden it. Like you have the pirate code. Uh, or more like guidelines, as a lot of the pirates seem to go <laughs> on, Where yeah. it over is said over. to have been passed down by Morgan and Bartholomew. Which is Captain Henry Morgan and Captain Bartholomew Roberts. I believe that is also Captain Black Bart. Uh, which, just for make sure nobody yells at me in the comments or anything, uh, they were not the only two that wrote it, but they were definitely the ones that contributed a great deal to it. Also, Morgan and yeah. Bartholomew sounds really kick ass. It does. Uh, right? You can't put like. It's a good lawyer, lawyerly name. Right. Welcome to the offices of Morgan and Bartholomew. Who can we stab? Yes, yeah, Squire. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I mean, I just wanted custody for my child. Is the last still alive? And they're like, oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Do you want us to kill your ex-spouse? It's like, no, no. What the hell? <laughs> then why have you come here? <laughs> We're offense attorneys. We go and attack other people on your behalf. <laughs> <laughs> their their ad goes like Morgan and Bartholomew. So cheap advice, <laughs> it must be piracy. Hey Leon. Ah, uh, yeah. I'd workshop it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was better in my head, but uh, we're here now. Uh, so, closing statements. You're har fiddly dee. Being a pirate, you're right to me. Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. Yo ho. Safe travels and good night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who wants to go first? I'll do it. You do it. Uh, I give Curse of the Black Pearl, the first one, four stars. I think it is, in my opinion, a very perfect action film. It's got all the swashbuckling fun. I mean, the CGI is dated, but oh my gosh, my dog's whining again every time, I swear. <laughs> but I, I, I think that's, you know, as a standalone film, I mean, even though it, it sets up so much for the next two films, that's my favorite one of the trilogy. I think it wins the threesome. I give it four stars and I give the other two three and a half. I love Dead Man's Chest and At World's End to no end. They're amazing. Uh, but... Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. The, it, I just love the world building of the first one. I love how subtle it is, and I love all the additions of number two and three. But there are some, you know, more gaggy Benny Hill moments that you know, even though I love them, <laughs> at the same time I love the serious world building that they've been doing. I love this character development they've been doing. It's like, even though I love the humor and I love the drama of it. I just think the first one did it better, okay. I guess. Yeah. More 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 compact. Yeah, if I could jump off of that, I I would think on my original view of these uh, upon their releases uh, that I would agree with you. But since I've been rewatching it, you know, over and over again, it's been oh my god, you know, it's already been over a decade since the last one came out. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. But oh, don't don't be too sad, Ken. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, I think I said earlier when we were talking about this that Dead Man's Chest and At World's End are really just one long movie. Though, with that being said, it's kind of hard to say that it all together is better than this nicely wrapped package. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, but there's just so much lore packed in there that and. And so if I'm going to say that I prefer that big ass movie over the Black Pearl, then I have to pick the one that I think is the better of those two movies, which I don't know. I think on the scale, it's honestly pretty even with the Black Pearl in the way I feel about it. But I think that together, those two movies are so, so elevated compared to this one that I, I have to yeah. go with Dead Man's Chess for, mm -hmm. for my winner. Mm -hmm. And they're all full-faced movies for those couch potatoes collecting their face stamps. No. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Ron Bob? All right, I'll say my piece. Um, I think these are excellent movies. I don't think... 
I wouldn't call them like world shakers or like, oh, you have to go mm-hmm. see this movie. But sweet gods, if you're looking for like some real honest fun, Gore Verbinski brought it, brought his A game mm-hmm. and the performances of every actor in there is so strangely like full tilt. Just yeah. they went in even when it got schlocky. They're like, all right, let's make it schlocky. Uh, Jeffrey Rush sitting there like, all right, I'm going to do a marriage in the rain in the middle of a maelstrom. Let's do this. Yeah, uh, yeah when, when Will oh, and, uh, just kiss. When Will and Elizabeth got Twitter pated. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's, oh, my. Um, this, so beautiful. I think the movies are beyond fun. And I've already shown my hand that I've remembered this many details after not seeing them for a decade. To yeah. the point where mm-hmm. I had watched the first movie, I can't even think I'm exaggerating when I say over 50 times. Jeez, uh, yeah. To the point where that movie is ruined for me. I don't know if I can <laughs> see it again. But the one that I always come back to is Dead Man's Chest. Because uh, the music is amazing. The action's incredible. Yeah. The design of the mm-hmm. villains is like i haven't seen such strangely inventive character designs <laughs> all around that's right. right yeah you don't yeah i haven't i don't think i can recall something that tops it that's been done since right and that, yeah that's the weird thing and if i like i'm not going to bring one piece into this but i'm bringing one piece into this <laughs> it's the sheer like dedication to a theme that that show brings to its yeah. inconsequential pirate crews where everybody looks like they belong on the crew together and it matches the theme of their captain. Uh, yeah. Davy Jones nails it. And oh, yeah. I, I would he... give Pirates, The Curse of the Black Pearl, I'd give that a four. Uh, I'd definitely give uh, Dead Man's Chest a five out of four because I want to be obnoxious about this. Um <laughs> Nice. And I, I'd give uh, At World's End a, maybe a 3, 3, 5. They tossed I, it together, it feels like, towards the end. It does feel a touch cobbled, but the individual pieces that are there are wonderful, and yeah. the world building mm-hmm. is still solid, but it needed a stronger villain. I think bringing Calypso in at the end was just like, a, hey, let's make this big and epic. Instead of, hey, we've been building up Calypso for three movies now. Well, yeah. Yeah, that was the problem was they revealed right when uh, right when she's released, Will reveals that the person who bound her was her lover, Davy Jones. Like, she didn't know that when she was bound. She she just thought the pirates figured it out and bound her. And so, like, that was the problem was they built her up so much. But right before she gets her moment to shine, Will's like, hey, by the way, the person that you think you're going to help once we release you, he's the one who bound you in the first place. Right. And then she's like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to cause a maelstrom and y'all can just fucking duke it out. I don't care. Yeah. She, she right. just gave in. It, it just see, like I would have preferred a little bit more build up to it. I do like the, the twist yeah. of the knife to be like, hey, David Jones, yeah. you think this is going to go your way, but we know what happened. It just would have been that's cool not too if that. It... Huh? <laughs> I hope we're not getting too spoilery. I I think that that you know, with that knowledge, people could still be like, oh, they, they put Calypso in this. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. I forgot. I didn't. I, we had dropped we, the wall. Yeah, it's okay. I think I don't think I'm keeping it wrong. in. Yeah, keep it in there. Hey, spoilers for an over ten year old trilogy. Yeah, you had you had a decade <laughs> to watch these. Uh, uh, but I, uh, I've i been Ron Vald the Scald. I'd like to thank the Faceless Leon and the Green Traveler for uh, inviting me. I'm humbled to be a part of this podcast as a guest. And I hope I get invited uh, to talk about something else with y'all. Well, I oh, think, you certainly will, my friend. I, yeah, I think you can look forward to that. Uh, we had a great time with you. Uh, you know, we we have always loved you from uh you know our our secret lab under here uh, <laughs> and now the world gets to love you too so here you go you're our only true touch with humanity <laughs> i apologize for the quality 
<laughs> yeah. Well, the face, the faceless Leon and I, we scanned the entirety of the human race, and we determined that you were the only one worth talking to. Yeah, you told the best story for sure. Oh, you hush. I bet Tom Hanks is still around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been the faceless Leon, and I've been the green traveler yeah. captain of gorsh and i will Yarr. continue to be ron valdeskald even after we stop this <laughs> yes you will safe travels and good night penis okay i just wanted one penis in there <laughs> that was my night last night uh do i stop recording Green and Faceless on the Couch is a proud production of FictionWorks19. If you want to learn more information about us, check us out on Facebook. You can also check out the Facebook and Instagram accounts of FictionWorks19. Don't forget to like, follow, comment, or subscribe wherever you catch the show. Thank you all very much for listening.